The first service that I need to create is a Bitcoin Core daemon. And this service, this is basically a simple Bitcoin node. It will download and validate Bitcoin's blockchain. And we are going to use it in order to basically get the blockchain, the backbone behind our uh, project. So I'm going to start by creating the service Bitcoin D. And I'm going to give it a container name. Let's make some room. A container name that will be similar. So the container name should be also Bitcoin D. And I want to restart automatically. So restart. Always. And now for the image file for this service. And I'm going to get this image from the BTC Pay server Docker Hub. And it's going to be the Bitcoin image version 018. And we can already start and see when we can try and play a little bit with different components in our BTC Pay server architecture. We can ask ourselves, for example, what will happen if I use an older version and uh, not 018. Or maybe I can even create my own Docker file so that I won't have to rely on the BTC Pay server Docker Hub. Just Please remember that this video is for educational purposes only. Um, you shouldn't use this code in production. But as long as you're being cautioned, this type of thinking process, this type of mentality, trying to imagine how we can change and how we can affect our architecture, our BTC Pay Server architecture, it will help us to better understand how BTC Pay Server works. And basically, this is what you are trying to achieve in this tutorial. Anyway, moving on, from the diagram, I can see that I need to expose two ports. The first port that I should expose is port 39388. And the reason we expose this port is so that our Bitcoin node can communicate with the rest of the Bitcoin network, with the rest of the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network. And the next port is port 8332. And this is the RPC port. It basically allows us to open an interface so that the other services might contact our Bitcoin node. So now that I exposed the proper ports, it is time to move on to the environment variables. And the environment variables, this is in my opinion, the Achilles heel of many Docker Compose projects. There is simply no way to know how the Docker file will treat those variables without trying to read the source code itself or rely on some external documentation. And the BTC Pay Server documentation is somewhat better than most other Bitcoin projects out there, but it is still far from perfect. However, the environment variable that I'm going to set will be the Bitcoin network, sorry, Bitcoin network, it should be all with capital letter, and it will be the main network, just be very, very careful. We are going to use the real Bitcoin uh, network. And on the real Bitcoin network, when we are making mistakes, we are going to lose real money. So be very, very careful with this one. The next uh, variable is the Bitcoin extra argument. And these arguments will be passed directly to the Bitcoin config file, which will be, of course, stored on my uh, Docker contain container. So let's put the argument in. The first argument will be to bind the RPC port. So RPC bind. And I'm going to bind it to 0000. And we know that the RPC port should be 8332. Basically, I told my Bitcoin node to accept any incoming communication to this port, port 8332, uh, regardless of the IP address. The next argument is the port. I just want to make sure that I will keep my port open, 39388. This is the port that my Bitcoin node uses in order to communicate with the rest of the Bitcoin network. By the way, pay attention to the fact that even though I'm going to create a Tor service later on, my uh, Bitcoin node still connects to the Bitcoin network using a regular uh, connection. So my IP address is completely exposed. And this is usually something that you want to avoid, especially if you're also using Tor service on your stack. And this actually can be a very, very good exercise for you. 
once we complete create our stack including our Tor service maybe you should get back to this Bitcoin D service and you should try and see how you can reconfigure it so that it will also use Tor um, yeah actually yeah I, I, I really recommend that you will try to do so it will be an excellent excellent exercise anyway moving on to the last argument disable wallet should be equal to one and disabling the wallet actually this is another great example for the importance of this type of exercise knowing that btc server doesn't require us to use bitcoin wallet means a lot about the underlying user experience both for the clients as well as for the store owners themselves and it also tells us a lot about the ways in which btc is btc pay is meant to be used so just keep this kind of information in mind anyway moving on when looking in the diagram again we can see that i need to create a uh, one volume and this volume is the bitcoin d data and i need to mount this volume to the data deal so bitcoin d data and it will be mounted into data deal just again pay attention this service will download a complete copy of the blockchain so we need to make sure that we have enough space for a complete copy of the blockchain to be stored and um, so make sure you have enough space for that anyway we completed our bitcoin d service our bitcoin node service and now let's see that it is um, running so let's go to our terminal and let's do docker compose up and we can see that the bitcoin d process starts to go and we can see that it is created all of the necessary volumes i don't use all of those volumes not yet i only use the bitcoin d data volume but soon the other volumes will also be utilized anyway this is it my bitcoin node is up and running and it now downloads and validates a complete copy of the blockchain and yeah now i just need to wait for it to complete the synchronization next item on our stack will be the nb explorer so i see you in the next video thank you for watching